What's going on world? Brand new episode of I Collect there on your screen. I'm your host, George Kill, and I'm here with Jason of Sneakerheads Clothing Line. Jason here has one of the most interesting pasts that I've ever had of any person on this show. From Milwaukee. Yes, sir. Went to Gramlin State. Yes, sir. In the record books for Gramlin State, right? Yes, sir. Sneakerhead, but also has Sneakerhead clothing line. Tell me about that. Sneakerhead clothing line started actually the same year I got married, 2009. I was like, man, what can I do to be different? I want to I start my own business. My mother and my father have never punched a clock for anybody, whatever. They've always been business owners. So it was just in me. And that's how I started my own business. It was Sneakerhead's clothing line. And we started out with shoelaces. Definitely, definitely. And we're going to discuss Sneakerhead's clothing line a little more later on in the video. But we have to tackle this, this wall here of some <laughs> exclusive stuff. And why not start here, man? This one right here is my one of one, which I call them the bread to shatter backboard. My friend Connor, he actually is a deconstruct guy. He's out of New York. My dad passed away in June, June 30th, 2020. And so after my dad passed away, I was talking to Connor and I was like, yo, I wanna do something to pay homage to my father. And so we came up with different concepts, ideas. And this is the final product that we came up with, which is the shattered backboard on the bottom and the bread on top. All the materials consist of python, crocodile, alligator, crack suede, napa leather, suede on the tongue, and leather on the tongue also as well. And then he has his trademarking, which is CZ on the tongue. And then also as well as the union concept, because this is basically a union concept uh, where he put, instead of union right here, he put his trademarking. The second pair I want to discuss is on your feet. These came out this past year, 2020. And these are my Louis Vuitton denims from the Louis Vuitton store. They always ask me when they see me in the streets, they'd be like, yo, that's a nice custom you have on. I'd be like, I got these from the Louis Vuitton <laughs> store. What's dope about these is I almost can say these are the most worn in 2020 for me. They're mad comfortable. I can throw them on with with basically anything. Let's stay on this middle row here. I have all my Air Maxes from my favorite Air Max that I have in my collection here in San Antonio, which is the Air Max 90, the Violets. I really love this sneaker. The materials on it is crazy. You know, from the, I guess you could say it's the cowhide or whatever that they put on here. From the toe box, the inner panel, the suede swoosh. This is just crazy. When I first saw the pictures for these, I said I had to have these. The Supernova 90s, nobody was checking for these. Initially, nobody was checking for these. And then the day that they came out, everybody in their mama was checking for these or whatever like that. And then the OGs, the Radiant Red, not the infrared, the Radiant Red Air Max 90s, the polarized blue, which was a quick strike. It kind of has that chameleon paint looking, you know, in there. Another one, the Olympic Air Max 95. This one is really dope. I used to have the original, which was years ago. If you cut this up, there's a different pattern underneath here, which has all the different continents on here. The LeBron 8 Lakers, I just got this one in. Literally just got this one in right before y'all got here. I love this colorway and I love the LeBron 8. That's the real key thing about this one. I love the LeBron 8. There's not a lot of LeBrons that I like, the silhouette, but. Is there any other LeBrons in this collection? here because I know you have a, a whole nother collection yeah in Milwaukee yeah we most definitely got to go to Milwaukee for the part two where everything really is but we have my favorite which is the Big Bang this one right here man is whew, I don't even want to tell you how much I got these for too it was a steal <laughs> go ahead go ahead let, let the people know $75 what yes yeah, $75 my upbringing in Milwaukee, our sneaker culture is very dominant, just like it is in Chicago. We're literally like brother and sister cities or whatever, uh, which I like to say. It's very dominant in the Air Force One. The Air Force One is my favorite sneaker. That's what I grew up on. My first sneaker that got me into the sneaker culture and got me into the, being a sneakerhead itself is the all white Air Force One, which I always keep on deck. I always keep at least two pairs. I may wear it twice, three times. I'll, you, you'll never see it three times or the same one on my feet. Growing up in Milwaukee, you said Chicago, Milwaukee, mm -hmm. kind of brother sister mm -hmm. cities. You had to have been somewhat into Jordans, right? Show some of your favorite Jordans that you have in this part of your collection. So here in San Antonio, I started out with these right here, wrote the 16, came with the card and everything. I knew you was gonna appreciate this. That's why I started with this, right? These are the Kawhi Leonard's, they have the claw on the bottom. Then they have the notches for 16 wins. I was here in San Antonio, it was 2014. 
And these did not come out in San Antonio at all. And he was still playing for the Spurs, man. I actually just acquired these last year. Shout out to Legends in Orlando. The owner, Juan, had these sitting on the shelf, right? And I was like, yo, what size is that? And he said they was a size 13. I was, bag it up. <laughs> but the funny thing about this though, is you won't even imagine how much he paid for these. He had the receipt where he bought these from the outlet. These were sitting in the outlet. They had them listed at 75 in the outlet, but he had a $25 discount too, so they ended up being $49.99. He ended up paying $50 for these. I'm very much into Jordan 1s. That's my favorite sneaker is the Jordan 1s. This one right here, I just acquired these. Shout out to my boy Ryan. Kicks out my diamonds out of Waco. We just had an event in Austin, ATX Kicks Expo. And he was vending, and on the tag that he had, he, it said misprint. So I said, what does the misprint mean? And he was like, well, look at the shoe and then you tell me what you see. I didn't see anything. I'm looking at it the whole time. Like, I don't know, I don't see anything. Like, what's going on here? And he was like, the wings isn't on the outside. Jordan brand misprinted and put the wings on the, it, on the inside instead of the outside. So this really is a unicorn, the Chicago Jordan 1, but I was like, bag it up, bro. I, I had to have this. A few other Jordans, the Fire Red 4, this is what I started out with. This was the first Jordan I had. This is what I started out with. So when these came back out with the Nike Air on the back, I mean, it was a no brainer. I had to get two pairs and I'm not even into two pairs anymore. Like I used to be big into, oh yeah, I gotta have two pairs. I'll rock it, then I can go on to the next one. But as I've gotten older, you know, family, you know, son, daughter, stuff like that or whatever. I was just like, what am I, what am I doing? I, <laughs> what am I doing here? I don't need two pairs yeah. of everything that I buy or whatever. So, but these right here, it's sentimental. So I had to get two pairs. The top three one with the uh, sneakerheads color line leather laces on there. See, they look like some high quality laces. Only but the best will we come from sneakerheads color line, but Italian leather, you know, gold or silver lace tips. You most definitely can grab those on sneakerheadscolorline.com. I'm not big into Jordan 1 mids, but this one right here, to see them in person, you know, with the, the scripture all over it and everything like that, what it signifies, I most definitely had to have this, you know, so I ate my words about Jordan 1 mids. The no photo joint. This one was another one that wasn't easy to get. <laughs> this one was another StockX purchase or whatever. We got the OG Olympic 7s. You know, these take me back. Cause like I said, I love Olympic sneakers. And this was actually one of the most prized possessions in my collection or whatever. They talking a little bit. I gotta get that fixed. You know what I'm saying? Some overseas exclusives. I feel like people slept on this one right here, man. I, I love this one right here. This is another overseas release right here. Now, this one actually did come out in the States finally, but I got this one when it actually came out overseas. Now, this right here was another one where it was a top priority to have, and that's the, uh, the undefeated pack, the Kobe undefeated pack. As a disclaimer, I'm not a huge Kobe fan, all right? I'll just say I respect his game. I, I want to say something else, but <laughs> I, I, res I respect the, the mess out of his game. This signifies basically when he got drafted, so that's why you have the different cities on here. They have number 13 is because that's where he got drafted to Charlotte at number 13. And then he instantly got traded to the Lakers. And this is the white pair. I haven't worn it yet. It will get worn. Don't get it twisted. Carbon fiber plate on the bottom and everything. Um, but most definitely that white, it just, it hit different. It hit different. But this one, this is why I had to get the pack right here. The, the multi-color one. This multi-color one is crazy. Now I want to get into basketball a little bit. I know you said you played. Tell me about your basketball background. Coming up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, I played high school basketball there at uh, James, well, it used to be James Madison High School, and now it's Madison University High School. Graduated in, uh, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> right after high school, I went to Grambling State University. I played ball there. Man, my whole family went there. We are in the Guinness Book of World Record for most family members to graduate from one school, you know, which is a major accomplishment. And then after basketball in college, you know, looks overseas as well in Spain. I had my son and it was just like, well, you know what? After my, my knee situation medically, my doctors was like, you know, you can, you can go back to Spain if you want to, you can go over there and play, but you may not come back walking the way that you walk now. So you can either stay or you can go and it's a 50-50 chance. So, you know, I chose to be a father. <laughs> to me, out of all of the, the HBCUs, mm -hmm. 
that's one of the hardest colorways of yeah. any school, right? Yeah. So if you could kind of put that colorway on any shoe, what would it be? What would the lace color be? They then came up with a few things that I have in my collection, you know, that I, I had to cop just because of the colorways. The dunk that recently came out last year, I had to pick up just because of the Grambling colorway. The dunk low here, most definitely I had to grab, which I wear every time. There's a game, I put these on. That's one of my favorite dunks. And I'm very much into dunks too. Even when these came out, which I'm not a huge, huge fan of, but it's the colorways, man. It's, it's the Gremlin colorway. So most definitely I had to grab these. I had two pairs of these too. I ended up selling the other one. If it's up to me though, as far as like a Nike ID though, it would be a Jordan one and it would be the Gremlin colorways. It would be the gold, black, and white with the, a little bit of a hint of the red as the alternative colorway that we have in our colors. What's been the best basketball shoe that you've ever played in? Oh, that's simple. <laughs> that's simple right there. The Reebok questions, man. I done had some phenomenal games in this one right here. The metallic blue to the first colorway when it actually had Hexalite in the mid, so you know, like nowadays they say, but it isn't in here. But yeah, the uh, the Hexalite, man, this changed my life from the padding, the breathing, the way that it felt comfortable from that Hexalite way before Boost and all that, you know, all this technology that they have now. This was Boost before Boost right here. Let's kind of go away from the shoes here for a second um, before we kind of get more into sneakerheads clothing line i know that you're also a sports head right yes sir i can tell by some of the memorabilia i'm seeing in here let's kind of go to that side growing up in milwaukee you have to be a bucks fan mm -hmm. i'm seeing this special Giannis piece yes, um sir. give me the backstory on this right here i'm a huge bucks fan i'm from milwaukee i grew up uh being a bucks fan all my life one day i get an email you know from one of our clients and he asked me you know am i a fan you know, of Giannis. And I'm like, man, is one plus one, two? Like, yeah, that's my favorite player right now. So he's like, oh, okay, I got something for you. So he asked me for my shipping information. I was like, okay, you know, I sent it over to him or whatever. Two months go by, I'm not thinking about nothing. And then all of a sudden I get in the mail, you know, this package and it's an autographed, you know, jersey from Giannis or whatever. So I'm bugging out and he took a picture of Giannis signing it signing it and everything like that and um so then i got it i got it shipped off to get it authenticated i knew it was real but you know just to have that little piece of paper to say you know that it's authenticated you know and all stuff like that i believe it was for me and my wife's anniversary as a gift my wife actually got it framed and that's what you see right there she got it framed for me so I very much appreciate uh, my wife for that. Definitely, definitely. So we have that, the Gramlin State piece, mm -hmm. and you had to be a Spurs fan, right? Because you moved out here, so you can't <laughs> not be a Spurs fan in San Antonio. You'll hear about it. Who signed the ball over here? Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq, Shaq signed the ball um, and the Funko Pop over there. Man, I've known Shaq for decades now. You know, one of my friends. Now, let's kind of go back to Sneakerhead's clothing line. Give me the origin of the business. It started out in uh, 2009. We started out with shoelaces. Had to get some knowledge, had to get some, you know, get some education on how to be able to produce the shoelaces, be able to create what we want. We was able to get in on the Adam and Eve days of Instagram, and that's what really transitioned us, and that's what's really grown us throughout the years, is just social media, period. But we started out with shoelaces. We built up our catalog. You know, we went from shoelaces to elephant print joggers, socks, tees, sweatsuits, hoodies. We have a women's line that we, you know, we do women's stuff. For me personally, I know that that's a big campaign. There's so many female sneakerheads in the culture, but there's no shine on the female sneakerheads. I very much push female sneakerheads out there or whatnot. What was the one apparel piece, whether it be shoelace or after shoelace, where you started to see like, oh, this is something. I used to go to the NBA Summer League every year in Las Vegas. I would have different meetings with different organizations, different players that I have relationships with or whatnot. Basically networking, that's my thing. You know, especially being a business owner, you know, so I'll, I'll go out there not knowing anybody, but I'm gonna network with somebody to try to see if we can establish something. Right after Summer League, one of the first years they had it, the Atlanta Hawks emailed me and they were just like, we got Summer League the next year or whatever, but we would wanna do something with you. We've been noticing you. We want to see if you guys would make us, uh, you know, like team shoelaces and the summer league team would wear them. And 
on the flip side, you guys would get more notoriety. If we have to bring it up, we bring it up, summer league and stuff like that. And they play in them. And I was like, it's a no brainer. Like, yeah, most definitely. We, we were young, you know, at that time, you know, starting out. We went into production ASAP. That's what started off with us in the NBA. My cousin being in the NFL at the time, Reggie Wayne, I've acquired friendships and relationships with other guys. I've met plenty of players, you know, just from going to the summer league, just like that, hand to hand, how you doing? You know, putting product in their hands, showing them, having introductions, talking to them, stuff like that, getting vouched from other players and stuff like that. That's my thing. I can speak for myself and I'm very much an introvert. You may not tell right now, but I'm in my I'm in my zone right here. But outside of this, I'm not too much of a big talker. You wanna talk about sneakerheads clothing line or you wanna talk about sneakers? We can do this all day. So where can people find sneakerheads clothing line? If they wanna partake, they wanna get some of those exclusive laces, you know, the apparel. You can find sneakerheads clothing line at www.sneakerheadsclothingline.com. You can also check us out on Instagram at sneakerheads underscore clothing underscore line and also as well on Facebook, which is sneakerheads clothing line as well. You can check me out personally at Rep Milwaukee 414 on Twitter and then also as well the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is sneakerheads clothing line or, you know, you can type in Rep Milwaukee 414 on YouTube. So make sure you guys, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Very much appreciate it. Well, there you have it. Jason of Sneakerheads Clothing Line. Awesome collection. Oh, and it's gonna be a part two, right? We got Oh yeah, we gotta go to Milwaukee. <laughs> we got this is from the last two years of the San Antonio home. But the OG Milwaukee home, like that's where we're doing 500 plus. You know, whatever. So this is just an introduction, I guess you could say. And by the way, I mean, I, I couldn't let you come to my house. We talk about the business and the brand and we not give you a gift. I don't know if you ever got a gift yeah. in any of your previous episodes, right. but there ain't no way I was not going to let you leave here without being able to give this to you. So that's a gift from Sneakerheads Color Line. Myself. Man, I appreciate that. Most Thank definitely, you. most definitely. story behind me actually getting the Bentley here. I got the Bentley about a year ago. And when I actually was interested in getting the Bentley, I was interested in, in getting a newer one. Like I said before, my father actually passed away. And going through my father's emails after he passed away, settling up his business affairs and everything like that, I noticed in his email, he wanted to get a new Bentley Continental GTC, a convertible just like the one I have. So it was pretty crazy and, and eerie. You know, my dad wanted the same car, so me having the Bentley Continental GT, the convertible, is actually paying homage to my father, so this Bentley right here is a dedication to my dad. Rest in peace to my father. <laughs>